predicament. David encouraged himself in the Lord. How did he encourage himself? Maybe he began to recite, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. And then he begins to say, Though I walk through the body of the shadow of days, I will not fear evil, for thou art with me, thy rod, thy staff, and they comfort me. You spread the table before me in the presence of my enemies, and my cup runs over. Surely, all this distress will pass. Surely, all this demetriment will pass. I, surely, goodness and mercy will follow me. How long? All the days of my life. All the days of my life. This is only one day out of 365. And even today, whatever is happening, let me stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Whatever is happening around you, whatever storm, whatever wind, whatever voice, whatever discouragement, whatever distress, whatever noise, whatever thunder, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. There are times you just stand still. Lord, I'm tired of fighting. Stand still. Lord, I'm tired of shouting. Stand still. Lord, I'm tired of struggling. Just stand still. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. And just watch the Lord clear the cloud and clear the storm and stop the thunder and then quench and quell the raging storm he encouraged himself in the lord and then he said i will dwell in the house of the lord forever he said this is not my abiding place i'm still going beyond always think about your home always think about heaven always think about where you will be on that final day rejecting the mountains of discouragement through faithfulness encourage himself in the lord point number three removing mountains of death by faith you know sometimes the, the mountains that oppress us is the debt we owe and we're wondering what can I do for Samuel chapter 22 for Samuel chapter 22 I'm reading from verse 2 and everyone that was in distress and everyone that was in debt and everyone that was discontent gathered themselves unto him and he became a captain over them and there were we seeing about 400 men can you see the you know the people that came to david what a competition was have you noticed the three things they had number one distress number two dead number three discontent and the people, they just said, our lives are useless. Mountains oppressing us. What can we do in life? What can we achieve in life? Everyone that was in distress. They looked at David. They must have been looking at him because of his history. Because of his, uh, of his attitude of being a champion. Everyone that was in distress, number one, and then number two, in that verse two it says, and everyone that was in debt, their debts they could not pay. It was like mountain, they just gave up and surrendered themselves to David. And if those who are in debt will just come and surrender themselves to the son of David, to Jesus Christ, he will have mercy on us. And then everyone that was discontented gathered themselves unto him and he became their captain if you will just gather together with the lord today and let him become the captain of your salvation that the debt you owe today do you know that those debts are going to be paid i said those debts are going to be paid jesus will make a way and the debts will be paid in jesus name
Proverbs chapter 22. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 7. The rich rules over the poor, and the borrower is servant to the lender. It's a great mountain when we owe so much we cannot pay. We become like slaves. We become like captives. And it's like every time we think about the debt, every time we think about the creditor, that is the one we owe, it's like our hearts are sink. In verse 26, Be not thou one of them that strike hands and of them that are short cheese for debts. If thou hast nothing to pay, why should he take away thy bed from under thee? They take the necessities of life away from us. That makes us to actually groan under such kind of debt. But thank God for Jesus. He will pay everything for us. Psalm 102, verse 16 and verse 17. Psalm 102, verse 16. When the Lord shall build up Zion, he shall appear in his glory. The Lord is appearing on your, on your behalf today. He will appear in his glory on your behalf. All these mountains, they are nothing. They are going to be rolled away. Your life will be free. Your family will be free. And in verse 17, he will regard the prayer of the destitute and not despise their prayer. Whatever destitution, whatever problem, the Lord will solve the problem today. Second Kings chapter 4, verse 1. Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead. And thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord, and the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be punch men. This woman was a widow. Her husband was a man of God, a prophet. But the husband left behind a great debt. And the creditor came. And when the creditor came, the creditor says, Where is my money? And the woman said, I'm a widow, a poor widow. I have nothing to pay. All right, I'll take your two sons. That's a mountain. He was going to take the two sons, and then they will become slaves for the creditor to become bondmen. And then she came to the man of God, Elisha. Those tears will be wiped away. Those challenges, the Lord will solve them in Jesus' name. And Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me, what hast thou in the house? And she said, Thy handmaid has not anything in the house save except a pot of oil. Then he said, Go borrow the vessels. Prophet, I told you I'm in trouble because my husband borrowed money. Now you want to get me to more trouble, you tell me to go and borrow vessels. Listen with your heart, not just with your ear. You see, sometimes when you are coming from a particular background, and you know the height and the depth of your problem, and the reason why you got into problem, and now you come to the man of God, and he says, this is what you do. Then you shake your head. The same man of God, preacher, pastor, leader. I got into trouble just in this way. And I'm telling you now that you should help me. And you want to get me more into trouble. You know, it's like Joseph. Joseph got into trouble through dreams. And eventually was sold into Egypt because of his dream. Eventually he got into the prison because of his dream. Not original dream, that's what sent him to prison. And now he got into the prison. He woke up in the morning and saw those two men. And then said, he looks sad. 
what's the problem with you today we have had dreams you know some people i don't want to hear about that please go your way you know why i'm here you know the problem that brought me here dreams you know i wish you know the lord will interpret that to you in your heart you know i got into trouble because of this and the lord says now rise up and do this say lord that cannot be right i got into trouble because of this he said tell me your dreams and he told him and he interpreted and what the interpretation one of the people of those two people the interpretation was bad but joseph he was a faithful man he still gave that bad interpretation and then he said to the other one that's a good interpretation remember me when you get to pharaoh and the fellow forgot him and now pharaoh had a dream it was what got him into trouble that got him out of trouble it's a paradox you can't understand it was what got him into trouble that got him out of trouble preacher you got into trouble by preaching it is that preaching that will still get you out of trouble preacher you got into trouble by counseling it is that same counseling that will get you out of trouble singers you got into trouble by singing it is that that singing that will still get you out of trouble walker you got into trouble by walking for god who would have rebuked you if you were just a member of the church a nice member of the church i don't want to get involved with church work leave me alone i love this church i'll keep on in this church and then somebody put pressure on you be a walker be a walker the coordinator would not have known you the group coordinator would not have known you and then yes okay i'll be a worker and you are a manager a director where you and this group coordinator you know is you know it's not even up to somebody working under you in your office and then the way he talks to you and then you know they said some things and they disciplined you unjustly you got into trouble by walking and then you say i'll never work anymore in this church I'm through. I'll not leave the church. I'll stay in the church. You don't understand the paradox of promotion. You get into trouble by walking, and it is by that same walking you get out of trouble. I wish God would interpret it to you. You see, Elisha said unto the woman, Go borrow thee vessels abroad. Of all thy neighbors, empty vessels, borrow not a few. And when thou hast come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons, and thou shalt pour out into all the vessels, pour it out, whatever you have. That little oil, pour it out. That's what I'm telling you. That's what I'm telling you. It's not just faith alone. Love, love. Love will remove mountains of death love you have problems still love you have some challenges still love you have something oppressive still love and pour out your life pour out your oil pour out your anointing don't hurt that anointing oil don't cover up that anointing I have so much disappointment so much challenges so much problem so much misunderstanding so much misrepresentation so much persecution i keep the oil in fact the oil is very small because of the persecution the oppression pour it out because you know it's in pouring it out this problem will be solved you will pour out yourself just, just love people pour out it may be greeting good morning how are you it may be just god bless you it may be i'm praying for you it may be just, just something that will cheer up your fellow brother even though you are in trouble yourself you are out of trouble already and then it says and when thou art come thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons and thou shalt pour out into all those vessels and thou shalt set aside that which is full so she went from him and shut the door upon her and upon her sons who brought the vessels to her and she and she poured out sons get involved get involved 
This is not only mommy's problem. This is your problem. The creditor, the creditor is going to come for you. You know, sometimes the sons don't understand. They say, well, it's mommy that will solve the problem. See, if mommy does not solve the problem, the creditor will come for you. Will not come for mommy. Will come for you. And then put you as a slave. Get him up. Carry the porch. Get him up. Bring the porch. Get him up. As we're pouring it out, and then it's getting full young people, youths, children. Get him up and carry the one that is full. Let's all join hands together. Love and fellowship and faith. Because if the church has great anointing, it will flow everywhere. It will affect everyone. Get involved. Get united together. And so that the outpouring of the oil will solve the problem for both mommy and the two sons, the whole family, the whole family of God. And then it says in verse 6, and it came to pass, when the vessels were full, that she said unto her son, Bring me yet a pot. And he said unto her, There is not a vessel more and the oil stage. Then she came and told the man of God. And he said, Go sell the oil and pay thy debt. This mountain of debt hanging on your neck, I cut it off from you in Jesus' name. And then, and leave thou and thy children of the rest. There's peace in your soul now. There's rest in your life. There's rest in your family. This mountain, whatever they are, they are going. Let's rise up and tell the Lord, it's going, it's going. Mountain of death, mountain of difficulty, mountain of discouragement, mountain of disease, mountain whatever they are, they are going. They are going.